Welcome to a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page, then click on View Agenda. Good morning, everyone. If you'll please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And this is the Lorraine County Board of Commissioners meeting for December 11th, 2019. We actually got sunshine today, something we don't normally see. In uh, 19 degrees. In December, yeah, 19 degrees. It's going to be a cold <laughs> one. Here's our uh, inspirational word for the day. Be devoted to each other like a loving family. Excel in showing respect for each other. And Lori has the dog. Looks like a good sister for Casey. <laughs> working? Hello? Yep, that's working. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Come on. Let's go show you off. Let's go show everybody how pretty you are. We have a gorgeous female uh, mix. I don't know. Border Collie. What did, what, oh, look at her. What did you go? Sheltie mix. I, she's just full of energy. She's uh, probably about four years old, and she will be available on Saturday. Aww. Well, do you want to talk? Do you want to say something? What do you want to say? say hello. She's adorable. Um, so come down to Lo our Lorraine County Dog Kennel. We have 17 dogs to choose from if this is not your type of dog that you like, and this would make a great Christmas present that will last for years. Then the kids won't get tired of her. So come down and see us. Come on, baby. Okay, we have no presentations this morning, so we'll jump right into the agenda. Okay, uh, Madam all Clark. right. Um, there are no investments for today. Appropriations? So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Uh, transfers? So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. There are no advances or repayments for today. Uh, requisitions? No move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Travel? No move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Bills? No move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Uh, number eight, authorize various personnel actions as indicated on the summary sheet for employees within the jurisdiction of Lorain County Board of Commissioners. And that would be County Administrator Jim Cordes. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I do have uh, a few personnel issues, potential hires, maybe at 911. Uh, possibly maintenance. <clears throat> that I would like to discuss with the board. Also, uh, one pending legal matter, uh, pending purchase of property. All those subjects allowable under the Sunshine Act for executive session discussion. So, to ask at the conclusion of our regular board meeting, we go into executive session and we discuss those matters that I've explained. Okay. All right. Uh, number nine, approve the change order number three for SONA Construction LLC 
for changes in plumbing work for the Lorain County Public Health Building. The total cost shall not exceed $227.73. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. Uh, number 10, <clears throat> approve change order number three for Electrical Corporation of America in Lorain, Ohio to provide technology installation as requested and approved by the Health Commissioner for the Lorain County Public Health Building. The total cost shall not exceed $9,185. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. <clears throat> Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. Under solid waste, number 11, approve and enter into an agreement with GT Environmental Incorporated, Westerville, Ohio, to provide technical assistance for the Lorain County Collection Center. The total cost shall not exceed $90,000. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. And number 12, approve and enter into a contract with GT Environmental Incorporated, Westerville, Ohio, to provide consultant service for the year 2020 for the Solid Waste Department. <clears throat> so move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Just wanted, oh, yeah, excuse me. I'll, I'll jump in there a little bit. <laughs> no, you go right in. Okay. <laughs> you go right I'll, in. No, since I've had the, yeah, she's on a roll. Uh -huh. Since I've had the chance to, you know, be appointed to the Solid Waste Board after uh, uh, my colleague uh, left to go work in Lorraine. Um, really have enjoyed working mm. with uh, GT Environmental and uh, Mr. Greenberg and the whole group. Uh, very, mm -hmm. very well organized, very professional, and had the opportunity to work with him when I was with the city of Elyria as well, too. And uh, just um, Mike's been with this top notch. Uh, 27 years. Right, 27 years. Okay. okay. Any We're further discussion sure. on that? or? Uh, Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. Uh, number 13, amend resolution number 19783 to instead reimburse Port Authority on behalf of Solid Waste Management District for costs associated with the storm, excuse me, with the Solid Waste Management District's newsletter. So move. Second. Any discussion? Let me just explain it because it sounds sure. weird. Yeah. <clears throat> we were not able to get uh, the checks in time. And yeah, I don't know if people know how printers like work, but they don't want to print anything until you give them some money because <laughs> huh. there's no market to resell printed our material. Newsletter. Our newsletter. We don't pay the bill. So <laughs> even with the county, they want money up front. <clears throat> because the books are closing, we weren't able to um, get the checks that we needed to get the newsletter out. Uh, before the holidays, so uh, we uh, we asked a port that has a, a more nimble system that this, uh, the checks can go out faster uh, to uh, take care of that, and then we'll reimburse them uh, when uh, uh, when we can do so. And that probably won't be even until January, because right. uh, everything's shutting down. Uh, so that's that's just a little bit of why we're doing just that. So logistics, timing, yeah. timing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Any further discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. Under the engineer number 14, approve and enter into a contract with Perk Company Incorporated, Cleveland, Ohio, in the amount of $486,874.80 for the Middle Ridge Road, West Ridge Road intersection improvement project in Amherst Township. This was the lowest of three bids. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. Okay. okay, number 15, approve and enter into a contract with Carvo Companies in Stowe, Ohio, in the amount of $718,114.50 for the Oberlin Illyria Road resurfacing project in Carlisle and New Russia Township. This was the lowest of eight bids. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kukowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. 
Uh, number 16, under prosecutor and treasurer departments, accept and journalize the DRETAC, which stands for Delinquent Real Estate Tax Collection, Appropriation and Expenditure Report, as submitted by the Lorain County Treasurer and the Lorain County Prosecutor, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 321.261. Revenue generated for 2019 was $444,917.95. And for 2020, an estimate of anticipated revenue will be approximately $800,000. Tax unit of prosecutor's office has expended $538,000. $578.74 and anticipates another $15,000 by end of the year. The treasurer spent $361,536.78. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Under the sheriff, number 17, approve and enter into a three-year agreement of pharmacy services with Correct Rx from Hanover, Maryland for correctional health care services. This was one of four vendors' proposals received demonstrating the ability to provide the most efficient and customer-friendly service that will interface with the current electronic medical record. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Number 18, approve reimbursement request for expenditures for the month of November 2019, pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 325.07RC. So move. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Uh, number 19, authorize the sheriff to apply for a safe homeland security grant to replace two out of date bomb suits for the Lorraine County Bomb Squad in the amount of $80,979. This is fully funded and no matching funds are required. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Any discussion? I, I'll never be wearing one of these. I can guarantee that. So, but it's just, you keep uh, aggravating people. You yeah, may need to. Yeah, it might come in handy someday, but and it's just. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It just goes to show the you know the hazards that we face and our first responders and because uh, um, there there are many people around who are willing to put on a bomb suit. Uh, to help provide safety for the community. Mm -hmm. well. Exactly, and it's fully funded. That's mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no match. No Which match. is unusual. <laughs> yeah. Right. The sheriff's office. If anybody wanted to. Any, have anything? No. Um, you're yeah. welcome to come up. Come and up, sure. Yeah. I'm glad we just went by that that uh, prescription drug contract. I thought Jack was going to come up and. Mm -hmm. Humble me if we didn't. <laughs> uh, well, I did check with Sandy yesterday to make sure you were good with it. So. <laughs> good morning, <laughs> Captain Ash down with the Law Enforcement Division at the Sheriff's Office. Um, just a little more on this grant. This is actually a yearly state homeland grant that's shared between the region, five counties. Our partners really work really well. They give us a pool of money, usually for SWAT operations, bomb operations, things like that really cater to who's got the most need that year. Um, being a federally certified bomb team, we have to have those two suits in operation. So in order to keep our accreditation, they helped us out this year to help fund that. Nice. Captain, while you're there, would you share just, I know I'm always intrigued by the uh, uh, weight, the, the capacity, and the ability of those suits for those who don't know. Yeah, so the suit is about 90 pounds for the suit itself, and the helmet wow. is probably another 25, 30 pounds. Hmm. And some of the advancements with this newer suit is some of the environmental controls in it to have some airflow to the yeah. suit. Um, but again, it's still very heavy, very hot. It's not something they want to work with very long. Right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kakowski? Aye. Ms. Sweeta? Aye. Okay. 
Do we have any public comment for today? Yeah, public comment um, for three minutes, anyone? Okay, seeing none. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Cordes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I still think we should have owned Mr. Lundy one of them bomb suits, but no, thank you. The, uh, <laughs> The, 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 uh, you can wear it when you start the car. You know, it's, uh, it, <laughs> the, uh, I wanted to thank the, uh, Jack and Melissa for working on that contract, getting those things straightened away. So appreciate it. They, they got it. There was a couple little minor things we talked about last week, and they, they had it done within a day or two. Okay. And so that's why it was back on the agenda. Uh, other than that, we're rapidly approaching the holiday. We have one meeting left, I believe, uh, until the end of the year. So we'll be putting on uh, next week, I'll work with uh, the clerk to uh, get on some of the emergency powers that we'll need to finish up the year as we usually do. It'll be new for you, Commissioner. But Correct. the the uh, we have resolutions to ensure that we can finish the year without having to make the board meet for little closeout issues. We put year. all of our faith in Mr. Cortez to handle things while in our absence. Absolutely. You know, and one day you're going to wake up and I'm going to be in, in Peru and you're going to be You don't want to say wife. that. Uh, <laughs> remember, if you're missing if you're missing $5, don't call me. If you're missing 500,000, I'm not around, you know what happened. Uh, the, 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 uh, <laughs> With that, I'm hoping everybody's getting ready for a really joyous holiday season and I yield to council. Thank you. Mr. Ennis? Well, I do have several <laughs> pending <laughs> litigation things that we have to wrap up before the end of the year, so I need an executive session regarding those matters. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. We knew it. Yeah, never <laughs> okay. fails. Happy, happy holidays. <laughs> okay, Ms. Kikowski? All right, well, this was a very busy week for me. Uh, last Wednesday, I drove down to Columbus for the County Commissioners Association Winter Conference. At our board meeting, we hired our new executive director, Cheryl Subler, who's been with the organization for a very, very long time, and I think she'll make a great leader since Suzanne Delaney resigned. Uh, we also said goodbye to Mary Jane Neiman, who was the public relations associate, and she retired with over 35 years of service. Uh, Commissioner Sweeta and I went to the Columbus Museum Wednesday night to participate in a get-together with the Matriots. Uh, it's an organization established by women, for women, to help them get, real, uh, get them elected. Uh, the room was packed with many women having to stand because of the, of the vast turnout. Um, there were many inspiring testimonies throughout the night, and it was a really nice event. Um, Thursday was busy with session after session um, with a variety of topics that affect county government. Uh, there was a trade show with vendors from across the state for both commissioners and for the engineers. And at the annual meeting of the members, I was elected to the executive board as mm -hmm. their secretary. It was a great honor to be asked to be on the executive board and to be elected by my peers, uh, which were the majority of those uh, people are Republicans, so that was very humbling for me. I'm very grateful. Uh, Thursday night at the banquet, uh, the new executive committee members, including myself, were sworn in. And our new president is Carl Davis from Monroe County. And I want to thank Julie Eman, our outgoing president, who asked me to be on the board of directors uh, this past year as her presidential appointment. Uh, Friday, we had a couple of morning sessions, and then we stayed to welcome Governor DeWine to um, talk about the opiate litigation in the afternoon. And I also want to mention that Mrs. DeWine spoke at our luncheon, which she's promoting the Dolly Parton Inspiration Library, where children receive books once a month until the age of five to promote learning and reading. And thank you to Commissioner Lundy uh, for being my alternate for the Ohio Public Works meeting um, that afternoon so I didn't have to rush back on Friday. <coughs> I know you had to rush back on Friday. Um, Monday, we all attended the groundbreaking of the new VA clinic in Sheffield Village on Abbey Road. It was cold and pouring rain, but it didn't dampen the mood with the pride of everyone there to honor our veterans. With knowing that they will have a state-of-the-art quality health care facility there that they deserve, and the Mayor Hunter was there, and he also was sworn in that evening by Judge Walther. Uh, his council chamber or council members were also there to uh, be sworn in, and his chamber was standing room only with his family, friends, staff, and colleagues uh, there to support him as he begins another well-deserved term in office. 
Tuesday, we had two long-awaited final hearings on ditch projects that were finally we were finally able to approve. And I want to thank our staff, Mr. Cordes, uh, Jerry Innes, um, uh, Don Romanchik and his team, the engineer's office and their team for working relentlessly on these two issues that once complete will be great for uh, everyone involved and especially those impacted by flooding. Last night, Janice, you're going to kill me if you're going to do all these minutes. I usually don't get this long of a report. <laughs> Quiet, yeah. I know. There's I so know. much going on. <laughs> uh, last night, I attended Judge Walther's fundraiser at the newly renovated shipyard, and it is a, the coolest place. Uh, still not complete, and I can't wait to see it when it's all done. Uh, he had a great turnout, and I want to uh, send out condolences to Don Walther, his wife, for the recent passing of her stepmom. Uh, from there, I went to Spectrum downtown Lorraine for the Democrat Women's Christmas Party, and I know Commissioner Sweeta was on the committee who put that event together, and I just want to say it was one of the best ones I've been to, and so kudos you. to you and the team. Well done. Uh, it was a class act for sure. So. Thank you. End of my report. Are you sure? I no. think so. I don't know. Yeah, I might have something I, more later. Yeah, yeah, I used to get blamed for the long reports. Then I got, somebody I got, else came I won along. I one today. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, congratulations climbing the ladder with the County Commissioner Association. That's quite an honor. And uh, certainly it's, you know, it's a bipartisan group there. And, uh, but uh, just remember the little people as you climb the ladder. Yeah. You know, remember, remember the rest I, of us. I was told that it was, it's been since 1941 that a, a commissioner from Lorraine County was on the executive board that climbed up to be the president. Wow. So it's been a long time coming. Oh, so nice. It was nice. It was a big honor. Okay. That's great. Um, just wanted to first, uh, you know, uh, one of our agenda items here talking about collecting uh, delinquent property taxes, so on and so forth. And uh, I just can't say enough good things about our county prosecutor, Dennis Will, uh, Chris Panowski, and the whole office over there in, in uh, uh, bringing in the uh, property taxes that should have been paid a while back. Um, you know, everybody uh, pays their uh, taxes fair share and everything else. It makes it a lot easier when uh, everybody actually steps up to the plate and pays. Um, but it takes a lot of work to do that, a lot of leg work. And um, I always want to make sure that the public understands that just because the prosecutor brings in uh, these property taxes doesn't necessarily mean that it all goes into our general fund. Uh, as you know, when you see your tax bill, the majority of that money goes to your schools. We pick up, what, $1.63 per hundred, I think it is. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I don't want anybody leaving here today thinking, you know, we're flushed with all this extra cash uh, because of the amazing work of the prosecutor's office, because uh, that's simply not true. And there's some people like to spread those rumors throughout the community, those who are not informed properly. Uh, but that's uh, just not the case. So thank you. Um, Dennis Will and the amazing work that uh, he, Chris Panowski, and the whole office do. Um, he's doing a great job for us. Um, also would like to express our condolences to uh, Don Walther and the loss of her stepmother. She's my administrative assistant. Um, it's been a stressful week with working on her husband's fundraiser and then losing her stepmother. And mm -hmm. so it's been a lot of uh, uh, stressful week for her. But our prayers uh, go out to the family. Had the opportunity to attend the Lorraine County Historical Society's Christmas party. And if you've never had the chance to make it over to the Hickories, I would encourage you to do so. If you've never had the chance to, to be at the Star House, which is the Lorraine County History Museum on Washington. I still run into people who don't even know that we have a county history museum. Uh, this county has a rich history, a good story to tell. And um, those folks are just so dedicated to preserving the history of this county. And as I said, we have, have a good story to tell, but uh, just a great group of people to also socialize with, very committed uh, to the history of Lorraine County. So I would encourage you to hopefully attend their events and, and be part of what they're doing in the community. Uh, had the opportunity to see the swearing in of uh, Sheffield Village Mayor John Hunter, the heart of Lorraine County. And I uh, uh, can't say enough good things about John. His head and heart's always in the right place. He always cares very much about people and working people uh, here in the county. It was just amazing to be there for the VA clinic groundbreaking in Sheffield Village. Thank goodness it wasn't snowing. Thank goodness <laughs> it wasn't super cold. But the, the rain, nonstop rain, certainly made up for it. Um, it was good to see Marcy Kaptur, our congresswoman there. We can't say enough good words about our congressional delegation of Jim, George, uh, Jim Jordan and also uh, Bob Gibbs. Uh, we actually have three congressional districts in our county. You can thank that to Jan gerrymandering. 
Uh, actually had three congressional districts in my house district, which is quite odd, but that's the way gerrymandering works. That's why it's not a good thing. But uh, uh, thankfully, they all came together and helped us uh, receive that VA clinic here in the county. It will help to service uh, about 7,800 uh, veterans each year. Uh, there's some radiology equipment they're bringing in that uh, wasn't there before, so the veterans won't have to travel as far to receive the services that they much deserve. But uh, can't say enough good things about how everybody worked together to, to make that possible. Um, so glad that we've been able to move forward with the Maple View Ditch and Grafton Road. Uh, those are two very important projects. A lot of people were experiencing uh, flooding over the years. This is something that this board has tried to step up and seriously take on. Uh, it doesn't make you popular with everybody in the room, but it's uh, being a good neighbor. And I've always said I'm a big believer and you've got to be a good neighbor. Treat your neighbor with, with, with respect. If you needed something, you would certainly want your neighbor to be a good neighbor to you. So I would expect you to do that in turn. And uh, so we're just thankful that we're moving forward with those uh, projects. And, and if you get a chance to uh, check out the, the shipyard in Lorraine, haven't been there last night, it's, uh, it's an amazing view. And uh, when you look straight out there before the sun goes down, you can look straight at the Baskill Bridge and see the boats and see the harbor. And uh, it's just a, it's a beautiful sight. We are so lucky to be a, a lakefront community. Uh, and uh, we need to keep taking advantage of all the opportunities uh, near the water that everybody else would love to have. That completes my report. As Commissioner Kukowski stated, we were at the uh, CCAO Winter Conference last week. Uh, that was my first conference, and I enjoyed it. Uh, there were quite a few um, exciting initiatives, and uh, as well as some inspiration on tasks and um, projects that I think we can bring back home closer to Lorain County here, opportunities for money-saving initiatives as well as programs that will enable us to provide uh, better, uh, better services for our citizens and um, smoother government activities within the uh, administrative side. So I'm excited to dig in with uh, both commissioners to see how we can uh, embrace some of those initiatives. I was really excited and proud to be attending Lori's, uh, uh, first of all, her acceptance to serve and then her taking the oath at the ceremony. And we're proud to have her serving as the secretary of CCAO. Uh, Wednesday evening was special for me when we went to the Matriots annual um, annual uh, holiday party, they recognized the class of 2019 of folks that they had endorsed. Great stories, gr stories of uh, long shots and inspiration. Um, but I was also pleased because I was a part of their 2018 team. And they are a great organization. I love seeing the growth that they have and the support they have for strong, um, qualified candidates. On Friday, we did have, I did race home to attend the OPWC District 9 Executive Committee meeting, uh, followed by our, our full committee meeting. Saturday was a, a busy day in our county. Big Brothers and Big Sisters had their annual Christmas party at LCCC. That was fun. Uh, just to see the excitement in all those children's faces. Uh, we had all kinds of activities that they could participate in, face painting. They asked me if I wanted to help face paint. <laughs> I knew we would have very sad children if I did that. <laughs> so I refrained from that. I helped make little snowmen with the, the children. But they had arts and crafts. They had face painting. Um, and then what they do is after the the lunch or breakfast, um, the, everybody is given a box of Nike shoes, each of the children, and then they also receive a present. And they have a countdown. They aren't allowed to open their gift till the countdown's over. And the squeals, they just, I get choked up. The uh, squeals in the room were just, just heartwarming. So then later that day, we had our a, a remembrance and observance of Pearl Harbor at the Avon Lake VFW. It was orchestrated by Mike Schroll, who is a uh, le community leader in um, veterans events, and he's part of the uh, writers group, and I think he's the leader of the writers group. But uh, we had a nice turnout in Avon Lake. The weather was brisk, but not not unbearable. And they had in um, 
commemorance of Pearl Harbor after the ceremony, they had bean soup and cornbread, which is a traditional uh, meal to serve at that time. Uh, that evening was the Alpha House Gala over at LCC. Again, I felt like I just <laughs> almost should have stayed at LCC all day, but um, that was a beautiful event. They had the Alpha House currently has one facility. They are uh, exploring the option of expanding not just one male facility, another male facility, but a uh, female's facility. Uh, uh, facility as well. They had um, great attendance, great testimonials from a lot of the folks who have been uh, residents at Alpha House. And one of the things that I think they accentuated very well were that the folks who gave their testimonials were folks from solid upbringing, education or degrees, good work environment, just one trigger in life changed everything in their lives and to hear the stories from those those individuals how number one how quickly the world can come crashing in one gentleman spoke about how everybody he had all these friends and he was um active in so many community uh endeavors as well as work projects family and his phone would always ring and all of a sudden, one day, he realized his phone no longer rang. Nobody wanted to hear from him, and nobody took his call. So it was a great evening. And Alpha House has a lot, um, a lot of plans for the future, and I'd like to see uh, them be able to execute a lot of that. They are faith-based, so they are fully self-funded. Um, so hats off to Alpha House. Sunday morning was the Boy Scout Santa breakfast, and Monday... I also attended the VA outpatient clinic opening. I do have a little sidebar on that. The One of the two buildings they acquired was a building that my husband and I owned. And so for almost three years, I knew this was pending, looming on the horizon, but not allowed to speak about it. So it was, it was really fulfilling to see how it came to fruition on Monday morning, yesterday, if you've been down Abbey Road, there's just one tiny segment of the building left. It was that quick. Um, folks said there was like glass flying, but they were fenced off. Um, but I also want to thank two of the tenants who had to just basically agree in advance, not knowing when the date would be, when the time would be, and if it was really going to happen. That was Dr. DeLuca and Associates and Attorney Sam Bradley. They were tenants in the building. And for two years, they didn't know. Would we be moving? Would we not? Do we surrender a lease? And they were, they were in full support of seeing the VA clinic there. And we know that that's going to provide greater services as well as increase of jobs mm -hmm. for our county. Uh, Mayor Hunter's inauguration was great. Everybody's already s spoke to that. The ditch hearings, one interesting fact, folks, I wasn't here at the beginning. They've been here longer than me those two ditch issues. So it's exciting to know that for those property owners where flooding is usually uninsured damage in when, it, when it's a result of that kind of flooding, um, those homeowners are going to finally have some relief. Uh, and to echo the sentiments of the two other commissioners, uh, my sentiments and prayers for Dawn Walter and her family and their loss. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Okay, there's no clerk's report for today. Um, board correspondence? I would move that the uh, reading be waived. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. Okay, seeing no other business at this time, I would move that we go into executive session for the reasons stated by the county administrator and the assistant county prosecutor. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Mr. Lundy? Aye. Ms. Kikowski? Aye. Ms. Sweda? Aye. This has been a broadcast of the recent Lorain County Commissioner's General Meeting. Unless otherwise announced, meetings are held Wednesday morning at 9.30 at the Administration Building, 226 Middle Avenue, 4th Floor, Downtown Elyria. These are public meetings and you are invited to attend. Agendas are posted prior to the meeting at www.lorraincounty.us. Click on Departments to see the Commissioner's page. Then click on View Agenda for a printable copy of the agenda.